with a knife video and today what I'm going to do is recommend some knives and there's a reason why I'm doing this video. In fact, it's going to be a series of videos, but I get messages, I get DMs on Instagram, I get emails, uh, I get comments on videos where people want to know, you know, can you recommend a knife for me? You know, this is the situation I'm in, this is how much I want to spend, they give me the whole, you know, sort of ins and outs. And I get a ton of those messages and that's great. I'm always happy to see messages and I absolutely do my best to respond to those, but it's just not always possible. So what I thought I would do is work through a series of videos and the only frustrating thing about this is this is a series that I'm going to have to do more than once. And so what I'm <laughs> so this will be the 2019 version and I, you know, it's just the nature of it. I'm going to have to update it as time goes by. So uh, maybe I'll find a way of putting a, a, a hard copy somewhere online, maybe on the Facebook group or something like that. Uh, there is a Kevin Cleary Facebook group. It's called Sharp Stuff. I'll put a link in the description down below. And I'll put these lists over there so you can go and have just a hard copy. Uh, but for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've broken this down into a few different categories. Okay, so I've got general use EDC knife. I've got hard use sort of outdoor tactical type of knife. I've got... Uh, high-end collectible enjoyment knives and then finally I've got gentlemen's knives or office carry type knives and so I'm going to do actually four of these videos over the next few weeks four to five weeks I can't promise I'll get to one every single week but I'll do my best um, and so what we're going to do is just kind of run through under today's heading it's going to be just a general use EDC knife so this is the knife you throw it in your pocket and you just carry it around and enjoy it and use it and it's going to be a pretty I tried to stick to knives that would be fair Fairly versatile, but wouldn't it wouldn't really fall necessarily under the harder use category. Now, I've also included links. Uh, in addition to the link to my Facebook page, I'll put a link to Amazon, my Amazon store. Rather than put a link to every single knife I'm going to cover in this video, because there's like 20 or 30, I'm going to put a, I'm going to make sure all of those knives are in my Amazon store, and then put a link to that. So it just saves all of us a lot of time and energy. I will also put a link to Rake Knives Canada, White Mountain Knives, uh, because those guys do support the channel an awful lot. So. <clears throat> That's, that's what we're doing here, guys. I hope you're ready for it. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to move this guy out of the way. I've broken these down into sort of price slash purpose, I guess. And I don't have all of these knives. I don't own them all. So I'm going to have to use the tablet a little bit. And I've pulled some up on different websites. So we'll scroll through those in a second. But we are going to start with one that I have no problem recommending. And that is the Rap Model 1. Rap Model 1 or Rap Model 2. I think it's worthwhile getting the D2 version. Not that the Aus 8 version is terrible. Uh, and perhaps if you're brand new to knives and you haven't done a lot of sharpening, you might want to start out with the Aus 8 version and that way you're going to have a, a blade steel that's going to be pretty easy to deal with from a sharpening standpoint and then you can upgrade once you feel like your skills are, are on point. Not that D2 is a really hard steel to sharpen either. You could jump right into this one and I think most people could handle it. So Rat Model 1, the other option would be the Rat Model 2 if you like a smaller knife. Both of them are just going to be super versatile, super useful. They're well-balanced knives. They're going to do practically everything you could ever want a knife to do. And they're going to do it at a budget price point. So go ahead and pick one of these up. I don't know for sure if all the versions are in stock at White Mountain Knives, but I think you should find some. And I've heard rumors that in the U.S., Walmart is clearing these out at like... I don't know, $10 or something, $15. I think I even heard someone say they got one for $7. So if you can get a Rap Model 1 for $7, I mean, you are, that's, that's a great, great knife at an incredible price. Next knife I want to show you guys is the Bird Raven 2. Now, I don't find this to be a terribly attractive knife. In fact, I think it's a little bit ugly, but I... You know, this was a knife I heard so many people talk about and every single reviewer would be like, this is a great knife. I really, really enjoy it. I, and I was just like, how is this happening? This, this is, you know, Spyderco's budget line. Um, they, it, it's kind of an ugly looking knife. How could it really be that good? And so finally, you know, I guess the internet just wore me down and I bought one and I've kept it because 
it is such a good recommendation. So uh, this is a great knife. Uh, BD1 steel is going to perform pretty nicely. Uh, and so, yeah, there's a lot to love about this knife. Now, I will say this. If you're going to buy one, if you get, there's an older version. And I can't remember what, what steel the older version is in, but they upgraded the steel a couple of years ago. Most places you're buying them are going to have the upgraded steel, but just double check that you're getting one with BD1 steel. And again, these are easy to find. They're on Amazon. They're, they're all over the place and they're pretty pretty reasonable at least the last time i checked they were all right if you're watching this in canada amazon.ca will sometimes be a pain in the neck uh shop around check uh check white mountain knives is great always check there i've ordered so many things from white mountain knives and i know there are border problems but i've never had anything from white mountain knives get stopped um but also there's Warriors and Wonders, there's SR Knives, there's Thunderbird Gear. I don't think Thunderbird Gear carries anything lower end. They're, they're almost like a Savenza store. But um, they do have a lot of great stuff. Anyway, I'm getting totally off topic, but uh, this shouldn't be that difficult to find. Now we're going to have to switch over for a couple of knives to the tablet here. Let me try to... I'm not going to let you guys know what my password is, but... I suppose if you listen to the clicks, you'll know how many characters it has if you're so inclined. So let's take a look first at this knife right here. This is the Rake P865. Let's scroll. Yeah, there we go. Uh, this is the Rake P865. There are a number of Rake knives. The P848, the P128SF. I would recommend any one of those as a regular use EDC knife. And you can see we are on Rake Knives Canada. I'll put a link to Rake Knives Canada down in the comment section below, or I mean in the description box below. Uh, great knives. And Rake Canada has pretty good prices. And they even have you know competitive prices to any retailer. And they'll ship to the States at a very competitive price as well. So even if you're watching this from the US, it, it's not a bad idea to check out Rake Knives Canada. Uh, by the way, knives going across the border from Canada to the U.S. have no issues because you guys have a little more sensible knife laws in the U.S. than we do here. Uh, in fact, we have pretty reasonable knife laws as well. It's just CBSA are idiots in the way they interpret them. Next up, the recommendation I want to make is Civivi knives. Now, um, there are a lot of Civivi knives I would recommend. This is the Insight Let's just pull up products really quick so we can scroll through a bunch of them. Um, yeah, so look, all of these, I have no doubt that all of these knives are pretty well put together. Um, the 907, I love the design. It's just too small for me. Um, the Plethros we've reviewed on the channel. The McKenna, everyone loves. I'm going to skip down a couple of pages because there's some older stuff that I want to share with you guys. Uh, the Waverin looks pretty good. The Aquila is somewhere down here. We just haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, there we go. The Aquila is my favorite to date. I really, really like that. And I've also had the Praxis, which should be somewhere here. There we go. There's the Praxis. And so all of these have been really, really good. Uh, and really, you know, there's a bunch that have been too small for me. But if you like a smaller knife, I think you'll be fine with that as well. Let's move over to Steel Will. Uh, I've got the, the cut jack pulled up here with the D2 Steel, so the, the $50 one. Um, this is Steel Will's website. Uh, they're going to be, they, they don't do the stuff like, you know, Spyderco or Cold Steel where their, their MSRP is really, really high. Um, their website prices aren't that ludicrous, but they're still a little high. Anyway, um, this is the Cut Jack. There's the Modus. There's a few other budget models from Steel Will that I, I have no problem recommending. The, the ones that I've handled and I can say with confidence are worth picking up if you want just a great little EDC knife on a budget. Uh, the Cut Jack and the Modus are both quite nice. Uh, I've, I've reviewed other cold steel, I mean, I've reviewed other, other steel wheels that are good, but they're not quite as, as well priced as those two. Okay, moving on now to some other stuff. Let's get this guy out of the way. We'll have to bring him back in when we go on to the next, uh, the next knife that I don't have, but I do have a Cold Steel American Lawman. And the American Lawman is another great, and now we're in the next price range now. We've kind of gone up to mid-range knives, but the American Lawman is a great knife, heavy duty, cuts like crazy. Uh, the other knife I would I would recommend from Cold Steel would be the Code 4. And I think I've got, uh, I did get a picture here of a Code 4. Sorry about the glare there, guys. No, I want to scroll down. 
So there's the Code 4. Great knife. Uh, what I like about the Code 4 is it's pretty classy. It's very slim and it can just, and it's still just as tough. So it's a little fancier or a little, I don't know, it, it, it's a little more, you know, gentleman's carry if you would, but is still just as tough as any other cold steel. So great, great EDC option. Uh, moving on to Spyderco. If you don't notice, guys, I'm trying to move fast here because there's a ton of knives to get through. Of course, the Para 3, I mean the Para 2, I don't know why I always wanna say that, but we have here a Paramilitary 2 S35VN version. There are a bunch of versions of this. Pick the one you like. Uh, there's the regular S30V. If you're buying one now, those blurple ones with the S110V would be a good option. I've even thought about picking one up for myself. But in addition to that, we have the Paramilitary 3, we have the Delica, we have the Endura, and we have the Endella now, which is in between the Delica and Endura. So tons of great options from Spyderco in that mid-range price point. And we could actually go on and on and on and on with that, but I've got to draw the line somewhere. So those are all time-tested and pretty well, uh, you know, we can say with confidence, those are good knives that have been tested by a lot of people and served well. Let's bring this guy back in for the next knife on the list. Let's see here. I think we've got another steel wheel. Yeah. So here is the steel wheel Tasso, the full size. Now I've already reviewed the mini and the mini was honestly fantastic. Okay. It really, really was. And the, the reason I'm recommending this a little bit over the uh, gecko is because one, the locking mechanism on this is so much fun. It's so well done. And uh, you know, so for that reason uh, alone, I would recommend it. But it, this knife also costs quite a bit more than the gecko and has M390 steel. So I, you, there's just nothing to, to make me think anything, but yeah, this knife is fantastic and easily, easily recommended. Okay, that's the steel wheel Tasso. Let's go over here. I've got one more in this category and that's going to be the Benchmade Super Freak. So this is the Benchmade Freak with um, black coated blade, M4 steel, and that really cool layer G10. Fantastic knife. Absolutely adore this knife. I just don't have it. So uh, I have had it. I, I ultimately ended up getting rid of it just because you can't keep everything, guys. I, I know you guys think, Kevin, why did you get rid of that knife? And, and the fact is, you know, there are so many, like just look at the list we've been doing. I love every one of these knives and you just can't keep them all. Okay, so this is exceptional, really, really well done. Uh, Benchmade Super Freak, they're fairly easy to find. They're a little steep, about 190 bucks. The next knife is even harder to find though. And I almost didn't put this on the list, but as I thought about it, I, I felt like I just had to. This is the Kaiser Kesmic. These are hard to find, guys. They really are. Um, you know, there's a few on eBay. There's a few at retailers. I think Knife Center still had some in stock. Um, I'm going to email Kaiser. I and there's a contact that I have over there that I that when they send me knives for review and stuff that I use, and I'm going to get in touch with her and see if there's any chance of. Um, see if there's any chance of them doing another run of these because this is a fantastic knife. It really is almost perfect in every way. Like the blade and the grind is perfect. The ergonomics are fantastic. Everything about this knife is really, really well done. And so Kaiser, if you're watching this, we really need you to make more of these uh, because everyone who likes knives should own one. They are really, really, really good. Um, so that's the Kaiser Kesmic. As I say, a little tough to find these days. If you go back and find my review, you'll hear me ranting and raving about how perfect this knife really is. Now, those are the mid-range recommendations that I have for you. And again, I apologize for, for making a recommendation of a knife that's pretty hard to get a hold of, but let's move over to the higher end stuff. And for a general EDC, there are a few zero tolerances that I like, but the one that I like the best is absolutely the 0562. Uh, perhaps the titanium, all titanium version. Uh, Brian over at Slicey Dicey, um, he has talked about this, that knife so often that he's almost made me want to buy one. But I, I've had like three different 0562s and I feel like I'm done with that knife. I don't need another one. Uh, but Brian's almost going to talk me into it. Uh, great, great knife. No question. And uh, yeah, if you're looking for a higher end EDC, that's, that's also a little on the tougher end of the spectrum. This may make my next list uh, of hard use knives as well. But for now, we're going to put it on this list as just a great general use EDC knife. Let's move this guy out of the way. The light's changing on me a little. Let's see if I can fix that for you and get into some of the other high end stuff that I want to recommend. So 
the Wii 037. This knife, the model number is 910 or 9, I think 910. Uh, this knife is spectacular, guys. This is one of those knives that just really hit such a perfect balance. And and I will say, the looks have put a couple of people off. And some people said, that's not a very attractive knife. I disagree. I think it's a pretty nice looking knife. I just don't love the blade finish. I wish it was a grinder satin finish uh, rather than sort of a, it looks like a blasted finish to me. Uh, anyway, that is a very, very minor detraction because this knife is one of the most perfect cutting tools in existence. It is it's it's honestly just fantastic. The lockup, the blade shape, the feel in hand, the innovation, you know, everything about this knife. And I'm, I'm not going to rehash my uh, review of every single one of these guys. So uh, forgive me if I'm not able to touch on every detail. Some of you will know the details on this knife and you'll know what I'm talking about. If you don't, go check out my full review and you can get them all. But this knife is is nearly perfect. Okay, it is, it's lightweight. It only weighs like four ounces for a nine inch knife. And I guess that'd be the other thing that could put some people off. It is a large, large knife. Okay, so the Wii 037, completely, completely awesome. Uh, finally, not finally, I've got one more knife actually. Uh, another knife that I want to recommend. So this is, this is second to last. And these are not in order of any, you know, any kind of special order. Uh, but this is the Riot Knives Torrent. And this, I love this knife because it's an in-house design from Riot. It's, it's a really nice, just general all around design that, that uh, isn't overly stylized in any particular way, but it's nice. It's a great balance between, you know, getting the details right, but also being simple and functional and, and having a little bit of visual interest, like stuff like this decorative pocket, the, uh, wow. <laughs> Decorative pivot screw, you know, the blade grind, the little bit of stone wash here on the flats is gorgeous. Um, the ceramic ball on the clip, the, the brightly anodized screws, like it, it has those nice little details that I appreciate, but it's also a knife that I, I have no problem getting this out and using it for just about anything. It's really well put together, very, very solid construction. So it inspires a lot of confidence. And that blade shape is definitely geared toward being a little heavier duty. It's thin enough behind the edge that it cuts well, but it's it's definitely a knife that's ready to do some, some work and would be great as an EDC. Okay, so that's the Riot Torrent. Finally, I've got to pull this out one more time because although I have a Chris Reeve knife in my collection, I don't have this one. Uh, this one, of course, is from DLT, which is great. If you're going to go there, use my use my link. You'll have to go to a different video to find it, though, because I kind of promised them that I wouldn't put their link alongside anybody else's. Um, but great, great knife. Savenza 21 for an EDC knife that is exceptionally well made, really, really well put together. And the nice thing about the Savenza is they're built to be extremely long lived. So this is a knife that is just going to last and last and last and last. And that's what's really nice about them. And that's why people appreciate them so much. In addition to you to the fact that it's meant to last forever, you also get the Chris Reeve warranty, which is fantastic, right? Anytime, you know, 10 years from now, something happens to the knife, you can send it back to them and they've got your back and they'll take care of you. So uh, really that's that's what makes the, the Chris Reeve knives stand out to me is the fact that you know, you can use them with confidence knowing that number one, they're ready for just about anything. And number two, if, if something really drastic did happen, you broke a blade or you just scraped up the handle so bad that you really felt like you wanted to get it sort of refinished, they'll, they'll replot, rebead blast it to it for you, give you a, give it a full spa treatment, what they call, and, uh, you'll be good to go. So there you go, guys, that are, those are my main recommendations for just, just a general use everyday carry knife right these ha this is not you know necessarily a hard use or a tactical knife these are not knives that i would recommend for for hunting or uh, any kind of special use like that law enforcement or whatever they're just knives that i think are highly functional easy to carry around and are really going to do the job that most people want a knife to do for them. Thanks for watching. Check out those links down in the description. As I said, there'll be the Amazon store, there'll be White Mountain Knives, there'll be Rake Knives Canada. Uh, go ahead and check those out. Check out the Facebook page if you want to see just a, a full list here. Uh, I'll probably put it up as a picture rather than type it out as a post. 
And if you are watching this, this video five years down the road, just go check out the Facebook page and, and remind me and I can repost this list for you. All right. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe.